So we ended up having uh, derived our price line and having shown that our price line is actually better than a bargaining process, even though both methods of trade still enhance efficiency. But now what I need to do is to take you back to our original condition that we had when we were dealing only with one consumer. We had said that the marginal rate of substituting X and Y has to equal the slope of the budget line. And we said that was PX over PY. And then in the last segment, we then said that that slope of the budget line is synonymous to the slope of the price line. So the price line is really the budget line in this model. In the last model, we ended up saying, along this point, I mean, sorry, along this contract curve, okay, we've got all these points that are Pareto efficient. And on those points, we've got the marginal rate of substituting between X and Y for James equals to marginal rate of substituting between X and Y for Karen equals to the marginal rate of substituting for another consumer and so on and so on, two by two by two, right? Um, but then we introduced another variable, which was prices. And we said, well, you know, at this point, we also have to have, because we're moving along this slope, Right? Not only do we have this condition, but these slopes as well, since we are moving along the line, are the same as the slope of the price line, which is actually the, the, the slope of the budget line. So the only thing we need to add onto a model of trade by bargaining is just the price line, because now we've got a commutative prices in our market. And since we've been moving along this price line, then at that particular point, the slope of this uh, in indifference curve is the same as the slope of that indif indifference curve equals to the price line. Remember, we didn't have these uh, indifference curves here, but we knew that they were higher. For instance, for James, you could have it there, and for Karen, we could have it there. But we just knew that we are moving from a point somewhere there to a higher point, okay? So the two indifference curves that we had imagined, okay, the, the slopes of these indifference curves are the same, but not only are they the same because the two indifference curves are tangent to each other, they are the same because they also cross with our price line, right? So we have our first condition, okay? This condition just tells us that in the consumption sector, all right, the consumption of these uh, two goods by these two consumers is at the most efficient level, given their prices, right? So now what we're going to, to do next is take all of this, all this information, the way we've constructed this model and apply it to the production sector. Remember, even though we're dealing with one consumer, I said to you, it was very analogous to how we would deal with one producer. So everything that we've done now here applies to the production sector. The only difference is that instead of talking about James and Karen, we would be talking about producer one, producer two. Instead of talking about indifference curves, we would be talking about isoquants. Instead of talking about the goods to consume, X and Y would be talking about what? Capital and labor. 